is the Emergency Medical Minute. Okay, so this is a case that we saw the other day, his fourth visit to the ED in five days when I saw him complaining of thoracic back pain. Um, on previous visits, he had had a chest x-ray, a T-spine x-ray, and a CTA of his chest, all of which were negative. And he was sent home with lidoderm patches and Valium and had taken all his Valium because um, the pain wasn't better and the lidoderm wasn't helping. He was taking ibuprofen and that wasn't helping. Um, so what's the next thing and what do I have to think about? Was there any neuro deficit? No. I would say MRI. But... Spinal tap for what? Uh, and what do you say MRI for what? I was like, but there's no neuro deficit. I don't even know that I would do an MRI. Abscess. Spinal okay. abscess. What kind of spinal abscess? Mm -hmm. Epidural. Was he an IV drug user? Yes, and that's one of the things. So that's key. Got to ask the guy. Is he an IV drug user? Yes, he's an IV drug user. Um, he was not febrile. He had SIRS criteria because he was hyper, uh, tachycardic, and um, his pulse, uh, his uh, respiratory rate was up like 24 or something like that. But he never had a fever. He had not had a fever on any of the previous visits. He had had tachycardia on multiple previous visits, but people thought that was due to pain, and it may have been. But he never had fever, and he never had any neuro deficits and he had spinal osteo, multi-level discitis, and a massive epidural abscess with um, spinal cord impingement. Um, so, you know, mo the fever rate can run anywhere from 13% to 98%, but you don't have to have fever. There's a large population that does not have fever with epidural abscess, especially this guy had been taking a bunch of ibuprofen for pain, so you don't know if he mask is masking his fever, but he never had a fever even that he knew of. Um, and he never had any neuro deficits, and neuro deficits don't have to be early, and they can progress rapidly. So usually you have pain first, and then you can get some radicular pain, kind of like a sciatic type pain if it's your L spine. You could get uh, arm pain if it's your upper you can actually get respiratory compromise if it's cervical spine, and they can come in with respiratory distress. Um, so, but hard neuro findings like weakness, um, bowel or bladder control, things like that can be late. So don't let their absence dissuade you from making that diagnosis. Um, the other thing with this guy that was weird is that his pain was not midline. I could kind of pound on his mid spine and I never got a point of tenderness. It was just to the left of his thoracic spine, kind of over his rib area, so I understand why the docs that saw him before chased down a CTA, because it wasn't in the midline. Um, so just keep in mind that they can present with weird symptoms, they can progress rapidly, and we see most of them are, mer are MRSA, and about 60% are MRSA, a lesser percent are gram negatives, and then lesser still are methicillin sensitive staff and all kinds of other stuff. Um, the two main risk factors are IV drug use and spinal procedures like an epidural or maybe they had a nerve block or some, something like that where somebody's putting something in their back. But some of them have hematologic seeding from other source. So you could have pilo and then seed your epidural space. You could have pneumonia. You could have just general sepsis and then seed your epidural space. And there's about 10% of patients that have it that nobody ever can figure out where it came from. So um, just keep that in mind. Ask people if they're IV drug users. Sometimes they won't tell you, but um, keep that diagnosis in mind because it doesn't have to have fever, neurologic deficits, and pain, which are kind of the triad that everybody thinks of. They don't have to have all those. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.